Okay, I think we can start. Um, hello everyone and welcome to this uh, lecture of uh, the computer architecture course. Today we are going to have uh, four interesting talks. They are from uh, papers from our group and they are very timely because the four of them belong to the micro conference that it's, uh, is starting this weekend. Um, the first paper, uh, GeneSM, uh, will be presented by Damla, who is the first author. This is um, an accept, accepted paper at uh, Micro this year, and she will be presenting it uh, next week. I think it's on Monday. Um, this is a collaboration of CMU, where Damla is doing her PhD, uh, Intel, and ETH. And uh, Damla will present the uh, GenASM, which is an acceleration, uh, acceleration framework for genome analysis. And it's the first near-memory hardware accelerator for the BITAP algorithm, which is used for approximate stream matching. When you're ready, Damla, you can start. Okay. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much for the introduction, Juan. So, um, hello all, and as Juan already introduced, um, I'm Damla, I'm a PhD candidate in the Safari Research Group at Carnegie Mellon, advised by Professor Onur Mutlu and Professor Sagata Goes, and today I will be presenting our work, Genasm, which will appear in Micro 2020 next week. So, Genasm is a high-performance, low-power, approximate string matching acceleration framework for genome sequence analysis. So genome sequencing, which enables us to determine the DNA sequence of an organism, plays a pivotal role in areas such as personalized medicine, outbreak tracing like COVID-19, and the understanding of evolution. Modern genome sequencing machines extract small randomized fragments of the original DNA sequence, which we call reads. And state-of-the-art sequencing machines produce either short reads or long reads, and this is based on the um, length of those uh, DNA, like uh, part, uh, part of the DNA sequence. And for short reads, we observe uh, a very uh, low error rate, which is around, uh, which is around uh, 0 0.1 percent of the uh, length of the reads. And for long reads, which we uh, can uh, see thousands to millions of base pairs in that, in each read, the error rate is um, relatively much higher uh, compared to the short reads, and we observe 10 to 15 percent uh, of the uh, read length for the error rate. So read mapping is the first key step in genome sequence analysis, uh, which we will go deeper, but you should be familiar with the term from um, Professor Honors or uh, yesterday from Mohammed's talk. So in read mapping, what we do is we take each read, align it to one or more possible locations within the reference genome and find the matches and differences between the read and the reference genome segment and that location. So um, multiple steps of read mapping must account for the sequencing errors, which I have already introduced, and also for the differences caused by genetic variations. As you can imagine, although we share more than 99 percent of our genome, we all are different in terms of appearance or the genetic like um, features we have. So these are caused by genetic variations. And as a result, read mapping must perform approximate string matching or ASM in order to consider or take account for these uh, type of er errors and differences when performing read mapping. So it is currently bottlenecked. Uh, of course, there should be a downside, right? by the computational power and memory bandwidth limitations of existing systems. And by the way, you can interrupt me at any point. Don't, uh, you don't need to wait for the, uh, until I finish my presentation. So, so our goal in this work is to design a fast and flexible framework for both short and long reads so that we should support both scenarios, which can accelerate multiple steps of genome sequence analysis. So to this end, we propose Genasm, and we base Genasm on BITAP, uh, which is an approximate string matching algorithm that uses only fast and simple bitwise operations, which makes it amenable to efficient hardware acceleration. And to our knowledge, Genasm is the first work that enhances and accelerates BITAP. So we modify BITAP to support long reads and to enable parallelization. And we also develop a novel BITAP compatible algorithm for traceback, which we will come uh, to the details. 
And then we also co-designed specialized hardware for both algorithms for uh, modified BIDAP and the novel traceback algorithm. So Genasm is flexible and can be used to accelerate multiple use cases, which involves a proximal string match, and as you can imagine. And in this work, we evaluate three use cases in detail from uh, genome sequence analysis, read alignment, pre-alignment filtering, and edit distance calculation. So if you attend yesterday uh, talk by Mohammed, you should be familiar with these um, like uh, use cases, but I will explain them later in detail. So we find that for all these three use cases, Genasm is significantly more efficient in terms of both speed and power consumption than state-of-the-art software and hardware baselines. Okay, this, is, this was the introduction of Genasm. So let's look at genome sequencing and sequence analysis and also approximate string matching and bite up algorithm in detail. So as I have already introduced, the goal in genome sequencing is to determine the order of the DNA sequence. In other words, the order of ACGTs, which is the um, characters that you would expect in a DNA sequence in an organism's genome. However, so the sequencing machines cannot um, take that long DNA as an input. And by long, for example, for human genome, I'm, I mean 3.1 billion characters or base pairs. And the machines cannot take them as a whole and give the complete sequence as output. Instead, all sequencing machines chop this DNA into pieces and only identify relatively small pieces. And these small pieces lose their location information with respect to the original genome. So we don't know how they fit together. We lose that information. To like see it um, with an animation, think about this as a large DNA molecule. And as I said, it can be 3 billion characters for a human genome. And uh, the whole genome cannot be sequenced all, all at once. So we broke, uh, break it into smaller fragments. And then we sequence each of these smaller fragments and small pieces of DNA sequences, as I said, which are called reads, are generated. So uh, why genome sequencing is important? And uh, I will provide an example from this year, and which is very relevant uh, because the whole world is experiencing this right now, which is COVID-19. So why genome sequencing and sequence data analysis are important. So after, as I said, after genome sequencing, we obtain a data, but we need to analyze it. And uh, after, anal after this analysis, what we can uh, find out or why it's important, it is important to detect the virus, for example, from a human sample like saliva. Or it is important to understand the sources and modes of transmission of the virus. Or to sequence the genome of the virus itself, for example, uh, here in COVID-19, in order to track the mutations in the virus, which would help to understand also the sources and modes of transmission of the virus. So if you, if you like sequence the, uh, the um, virus from different locations and compare the uh, outcome, then you can see for each location or for some portions of the location where that virus transmitted from. So you can see, okay, for example, in, uh, in Washington DC, the virus came from Europe. I'm just uh, like making it up, but you can track it and it is important to see the transmission. And also to explore the genes of infected patients. So this is not for sequencing the virus, but sequencing the, like the human itself to understand why some people get more severe symptoms than others, and also to help with the development of new treatments like vaccines. So sequencing uh, of COVID-19 here is pretty important to address these uh, requirements to both understand the virus and to come up with uh, solutions to defeat that. And uh, <clears throat> what we should expect in near future, I'm saying near future because there's already a development, uh, like a, a sequencing device development uh, happening in a, a company, sequencing technology company called Oxford Nanopore. So as you can see from the right hand side, uh, they are introducing a very small, portable, and cheap devices that can be plugged to your mobile phone, which would enable everyone to perform sequencing, like genome sequencing, and on their own genome by themselves using their only mobile phone. So this would provide portability, easy access, and also privacy as well, because you can do it by yourself. But challenges, um, of course, as I said, these are these uh, devices are generating some data, 
but we need to perform the required analysis on our phones, which have very limited resources. So what do I mean when I say genome sequence analysis or genome analysis? So this is a, this uh, slide should be familiar because this is one of the uh, Professor Honor uh, talks. So uh, after sequencing, as I have already introduced, we need to uh, find the location of each of these uh, small pieces uh, with respect to a um, uh, reference genome. And by reference genome, what I mean is, <clears throat> for example, we have this for many, many organisms, including human genome, it is a representative like the DNA sequence. So of course, uh, it's, it is only uh, like uh, generated from a sample, so it cannot be represented for the whole, like all organisms, as I already said, we have some differences, but this is the approach we need to follow, at least to find uh, like the, um, uh, location of those small chunks because that's how you can then find the uh, differences or the matches with respect to this original genome. After performing this, uh, the next step is of course uh, seeing what are the, based on the differences we discovered, calling the uh, variances or any diseases, for example, or any genetic features that are mapped to those differences. And then the last step is, of course, the scientific discovery based on this variant calling step. So, <clears throat> again, this is another uh, slide from Professor Honor Mutlu. Here, uh, it, uh, we, uh, so it is known that the bottleneck is in the read mapping step. So that's why in genasm we mainly focusing on that bottleneck. So let's focus on read mapping and see what's happening as part of its pipeline. So it can be seen as a four-step process, and sometimes it's also called seed and expand. And first, read mapping starts with indexing the reference genome. And this index contains all possible fixed length substrings, which we call seeds, as the keys and the exact match locations of these substrings in the reference genome as values. So we come up with a hash table, and here we have the keys as like uh, substrings, and they are fixed length and the exact match locations in the, as the uh, values. And then <clears throat> we, um, in the seeding, we uh, query this index structure for determining potential mapping locations of each read in the reference genome and using the uh, uh, substrings of the reads, which are again called seeds from each read. So that's why it's called seeding because we are uh, querying that uh, generated hash table based index with the seeds coming out of the reads. And seeds are, as I said, the um, substrings of the read. And in the third step, <clears throat> pre-alignment filtering, we use filtering heuristics to examine the similarity between every read and its potential matching segment on the reference genome that are identified in the second step. And here, goal is to eliminate most of the dissimilar sequences to decrease the number of required alignments, which is the next step. So here, we uh, provide the remaining potential mapping locations after we apply the filtering heuristics. And then for the um, none like filtered remaining mapping locations, we get the reference segment and query read in the fourth step and perform read alignments or, the, or also called seed expansion, to, uh, per, uh, which performs a dynamic programming based algorithm to determine the best location of the query read and to find the optimal alignment. So <clears throat> when we are mapping the reads generated from the sequence genome, they may not exactly map to the reference genome, as we know, because of variations and sequencing errors. And let's look at this example to see what kind of errors and differences, which are also known as edits, we should expect. So first, we can uh, observe deletions. As you can see here, one of the characters of the reference is missing in the read, so it's deletion or we can expect substitutions, which means that one of the characters in the reference flips with another one. Here, for example, G is uh, not existing, but instead we see a C there. And the other option is seeing insertions, which means that a character that doesn't appear in the reference can be introduced in the read. So these are the three common uh, errors <clears throat> or uh, edits we can expect. So since multiple steps of read mapping must account for these errors, deletion, substitutions, insertions, they must perform approximate string matching. And the goal of approximate string matching is to detect the differences and similarities between two sequences. 
And in genomics, ASM is required first to determine the number of, the minimum number of edits between two genomic sequences, which is called edit distance. And here in read mapping, the reference segment and the um, read itself are those two uh, genomic sequences. And also we need ASM to find the optimal alignment with a traceback step. So in this traceback step, what we do is we find the sequence of matches, substitutions, insertions, and deletions along with their position. So for example, when we look at this example here, we see that we have three matches followed by a deletion and then six more matches and a substitution and six more matches and an insertion and two matches for, for this example. So this is the traceback output we want to come up with. But uh, appro approximate string matching, uh, matching algorithms need to perform this additional traceback step in order to find that because as the first step, they only find the uh, <clears throat> edit distance or uh, in some other scenarios, the uh, score of the alignment. So we need to do this additional step to come up with this output. And this is revealing the uh, <clears throat> location of each edit, as I said, and type of each edit, which you should expect in the alignment, in the optimal alignment. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. So, approximate string matching is typically implemented as a dynamic programming based algorithm, which has quadratic time and space complexity. So, it is desirable to find lower complexity algorithms for approximate string matching. One candidate to replace DP-based algorithms for ASM is the BIRAP algorithm. And BIRAP uses only fast and simple bitwise operations to perform approximate string matching, which makes it amenable to efficient hardware acceleration. And here, that's the reason why we picked BIRAP algorithm to accelerate. So BIRAP tackles the problem of computing the minimum edit distance between a reference text, such as reference genome, and a pattern, such as a read, with a maximum of k errors. So k is a parameter here. And <clears throat> the algorithm has two steps. And it starts with a pre-processing procedure where we generate one pattern bitmaps for each character in the alphabet, which is ACGT in this context. And these pattern bitmaps help us to represent the query pattern in a binary format. And the second step, searching or edit distance calculation, which is the main step of the algorithm. And here, we examine each text character one by one by using the pre-processed pattern bitmaps from the uh, previous um, uh, step and status bit vectors, which are updated at each text iteration and hold the partial match information for the text characters examined so far and simple bitwise operations. So let's look at uh, quickly the main step of the algorithm at the distance calculation. As I said, the algorithm examines each text character one by one, one per iteration. And at each iteration, the pattern bit mask of the current text character, which is denoted as PM here, is retrieved. And then for a distance D, which can be between one to K, and K was the, if you remember, the um, Mac like threshold of edit distance, which is a parameter of the algorithm. Three intermediate bit vectors for the error cases, one for uh, one, e one each for deletion, insertion, and substitution, and another one for the match case are calculated. And in order to take all possible partial matches into consideration, which are stored with these four intermediate bit vectors, we perform an AND operation with the computed intermediate bit vectors to preserve all zeros that exist in any of them. And uh, in this algorithm, zeros means a uh, match. So that's why we care um, zeros instead of ones in this, as part of this uh, algorithm. And we <clears throat> save the ended result as the RD, which is that status bit vector I mentioned in the previous slide. And um, it is the status bit vector for the current iteration. And this process is repeated for each potential edit distance value, as I said, from one to K. So um, this is an existing algorithm. We haven't uh, like developed that, but uh, why, why I'm explaining this? Because it is important to understand uh, three key properties of the algorithm, which shaped our um, design actually in Genesis. So first, BIDAP iterates over each text character as the outer loop, as I showed, and it iterates over each possible edit distance, one to K as the inner loop, again, as I introduced. So when we have long error-prone reads, 
both of these loops need to iterate over very large numbers. <clears throat> and this is for each read, each read to reference uh, mapping alignment. So it is huge. We are dealing with large number of iterations here. <clears throat> Second, there's two level data dependency in BITAP. First, there's an outer loop data dependency when computing deletion, substitution, and match bit vectors, as they require all dark bit vectors, which are coming from previous text iteration. And also, there's an inner loop data dependency when computing insertion bit vector, as it requires RD minus one, which is coming from previous inner loop iteration. So we are dealing with two level data dependency. And third, <clears throat> BITAP generates these four intermediate bit vectors, but they are not stored and processed with a traceback step to find the optimal alignment. So there is no traceback support in the baseline BITAP algorithm. So we find that BITAP has five limitations that hinder its applicability and efficient hardware acceleration for genome sequence analysis. And we have already covered the first two algorithmic limitations. And we have one more algorithmic limitation, which is no support for long reads. And uh, <clears throat> in BITAP, the query length so read length is limited by the word size of the machine running the algorithm because each bit vector has a length equal to the uh, length of the pattern or read and we perform the bitwise operations on these bit vectors. So the algorithm doesn't support long reads whose lengths are on the order of thousands to millions of base pairs because the, uh, the, the, we don't have the word limit is, the word uh, size is limiting us. And these are the algorithmic limitations of the BIDAP algorithm. So even after we solve the algorithmic limitations of BIDAP, we find that we cannot extract significant performance benefits with algorithmic enhancements alone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. For example, <clears throat> while BITAP iterates over each character of the input text sequentially, we can enable text level parallelism to improve its performance. However, the achievable level of parallelism is limited by the number of compute units in existing systems. Then we would expect that a GPU, which has thousands of compute units, can overcome the limited compute parallelism that CPUs experience. However, we find that a GPU implementation of the BIDAP algorithm suffers from the limited amount of memory bandwidth available for each GPU thread. And these are the hardware related limitations of BIDAP. So in order to overcome all of these limitations and design an efficient accelerator, we find that we need to both modify and extend the BITAP algorithm and develop specialized hardware that can exploit the new opportunities that our algorithmic modifications provide. To this end, we propose Genasm, an ASM acceleration framework for genome sequence analysis. So to our knowledge, Genasm is the first ASM acceleration framework for genome sequence analysis, and it is also first that enhances and accelerates BITAP. So we make significant modifications to BITAP in order to overcome those five limitations. First, we modify the BITAP algorithm by extending it to support long reads and by eliminating loop carry data dependencies to enable parallelization. And second, we develop a novel BITAP compatible algorithm for traceback, which uses information collected during ASM about different types of errors, which I mean those intermediate bit factors, to identify the optimal alignment of reads. And these cover the algorithmic contributions of GNAS. And third, we co-design specialized low power and area efficient hardware for both modified BITAP algorithm and the novel traceback algorithm, and this covers the hardware level contributions of Genasm. So our first algorithm, Genasm DC, is the modified BITAP uh, for distance calculation, where we extend it, as I said, to provide efficient support for long reads, and also we enable parallelism, besides bit parallelism that baseline BITAP has already has, by performing loop unrolling, and re uh, removing the loop dependencies, and also exploiting text level parallelism, where we divide the text into overlapping subtexts and search the query in each of these subtexts in parallel. And our second algorithm, Genasm TB, is a novel BITAP compatible traceback algorithm, as I have already introduced, which walks through the intermediate bit vectors, match, deletion, substitution, and insertion, generated by Genasm DC, which is the modified BITAP, as I said, 
and finds the optimal alignment. And in order to decrease the memory footprint of the algorithm, and this is coming from storing all these intermediate bit vectors for each inner and outer loop iteration. So uh, it is huge. It follows a divide and conquer approach. And here we divide the text and pattern into overlapping windows and perform the traceback computation for each window. After all of the windows partial traceback outputs are generated, we merge them to find a complete traceback output. So this helps us to, since we are dividing the text stamp pattern, uh, decrease the number, like the amount of uh, data we need to store as the intermediate bit vectors to perform traceback. So let's look at the hardware design of Genasm. Our co-designed hardware consists of two components. And Genasm DC here provides so hardware support to efficiently execute our Genasm DC algorithm to perform distance calculation. And Genasm TB, which provides hardware support to efficiently execute our novel Genasm TB algorithm to find the optimal alignment. And Genasm has uh, two types of SRAM buffers, DC SRAM and TB SRAM. And let's look at the high level overview of Genasm. So Genasm execution starts when the host CPU issues a task to G uh, Genasm with the reference and query sequences locations. And then Genasm DC reads the corresponding text and pattern from the memory and then writes these to its dedicated SRAM, which is DC SRAM. After that, Genasm DC divides the reference text and query pattern into uh, multiple overlapping windows. And for each subtext and sub pattern, which corresponds to each of these windows, um, uh, for each subtext and sub pattern, Genasm DC searches for the pattern within the text, like sub pattern within the subtext, and generates the bit vectors. And then uh, Genasm DC writes these bit vectors to TBS drums. And once Genasm DC completes its uh, search for the current window, so after it writes all of the bit vectors for the current window, then Genasm TB starts reading the stored bit vectors by following a, a input dependent order. And then um, it generates the windows traceback output. So once Genasm TB generates this output for the current window, then we uh, compute the next window and repeat steps from three to seven until all windows are completed. So our specialized compute units, which is DC and TB accelerators, and on-chip SRAMs, which are DC SRAM and TB SRAMs, help us to match the rate of computation with memory capacity and bandwidth, achieve high performance and power efficiency, and scale linearly in performance with the number of parallel compute units that we add to the system. Let's look at Genasm DC's hardware design. So we implement it as a linear cyclic systolic array-based accelerator using small and very simple logic components. And this design helps us to maximize parallelism and minimize memory bandwidth and footprint. So processing core is the basic compute component, which computes the intermediate bit vectors, those four of them, along with the RD bit vector, which is the status bit vector. And when we add the flip-flop based storage logic around this processing core, we define a processing element, PE. And multiple PEs are concatenated to define a processing block. So we also have DCS RAM, which stores the reference text, the pattern bit mass for the query read and the intermediate data generated from PEs. And we also have TBS RAMs, which store the intermediate bit vectors generated by each PE of Genasm DC, which will be later used by Genasm TB. And we implement Genasm TB hardware using very simple logic again, which reads the bit vectors from one of the TBS RAMs using the computed address, and then performs the required bitwise comparisons to find the traceback output for the current position. And finally, computes the next TBS RAM address to read the new set of bit vectors. And after Genasm TB finds the complete traceback output, which is also called cigar string, it writes the output to main memory and completes its execution. So we uh, demonstrate the efficiency and flexibility of Genasm by describing three use cases of approximate string matching in genome sequence analysis and read alignment and pre-alignment filtering are coming from the read mapping pipeline as I uh, have introduced as part of the background material. And uh, as a third use case, uh, which is edit distance calculation, this is a um, 
fundamental or very fundamental operation in genomics that measures the similarity or distance between two arbitrary length sequences. So this is, uh, uh, as I said, BiLab is uh, inherently calculating edit distance. So that's why um, it is a very natural use case for genasm. And we believe genasm framework can be useful for many other use cases. And we discussed some of them briefly in our paper. Besides, so we evaluated these three and we like discussed some of the uh, other use cases, including generic text search, for example. Let's look at our evaluation of the genasm design and framework. So we evaluate genasm using a combination of synthesis of our DC and TB accelerator data pads and a detailed simulation based performance modeling. And we evaluate the 16 gigabytes of HMC-like 3D stacked DRAM architecture with 32 walls. So our accelerators can be ported anywhere in the system, but in order to achieve high parallelism and low power consumption, we place both DC and TB along with the associated SRAMs in the logic layer of 3D stack memory. And as I will show next, our hardware is highly efficient in terms of both area and power. So they are within the budget limit of the logic layer. So for the use cases we evaluate, we compare genasm with state-of-the-art software and hardware baseline. And as you can see here, uh, for the read alignment, we compare with two commonly used tools, which are called Minimap2 and BWAMAP. And as hardware baselines, we compared against GACT of Darwin, which is for long read alignment, and SILAX of GenX for short read alignment. And for pre-alignment filtering, we uh, compared against an in-house filter from uh, developed by Mohammed Suji. And for edit distance calculation as a software baseline, we compared against EDLab, which is an edit distance calculation library, software based library, and an ASAP, which is a GPU, um, sorry, FPGA based um, accelerator for edit distance calculation. So I won't go into details of the, uh, uh, our evaluation methodology for each use case, but you can either refer to the slides later or our paper for more details. Okay, so we synthesize our DC and TB accelerator data pads with a typical 28 nanometer low power process and both accelerators operate at one gigahertz. We find that for 32 genasm accelerators, one for each HMC volt, total area overhead is 10.69 millimeters square and total power consumption is 3.23 watts. So um, these may not make a lot of sense to you. So to give a comparison, we observe that both area and power consumption of genasm at a single volt is around 1% of the area and power consumption of a single Xeon CPU core. So we find out that genasm has low area and power overheads, which is important. So let's look at our results for the first use case, read alignment. So as software baselines, as I said, we compare with BWAMM and uh, Minimap2, and we find that genasm achieves 648 times speed up over 12 thread runs of BWAMM and 116 times speed up over, again, 12 thread run of Minimap2 while reducing power consumption by 34 times and 37 times. This is for a software baseline comparison for long reads. And compared to the GACT of Darwin, which is the state of the art, as I said, long read alignment accelerator, Genasm provides 3.9 times better throughput, 6.6 .6 times better throughput per unit area and 10.5 times better throughput per unit power. And again, this is for a uh, long read. When we look at short reads compared to the same software baseline, scenario is uh, similar. Again, Genasm provides significant speed up and reduction in power consumption. And compared to the Silex of GenX, which was the hardware uh, baseline for this use case, Genasm provides 1.9 times better throughput while using 63% less logic area and 82% less logic power. So as I said, Genasm is uh, highly efficient in terms of both power consumption and uh, it has a very low uh, area overhead, Com again, compared to even these hardware baseline, which are state of the art. Let's look at our results for the second use case briefly. So here, uh, I won't cover all the detail, all the results in detail, but uh, here's the key takeaway. Compared to Suji, which is, uh, as I said, state of the art FPGA based filter, Genasm is more efficient in terms of both speed and power consumption 
while significantly improving the accuracy of pre-alignment filtering. So this is important because when you, imp like when you decrease the false accept rate, which is one metric for accuracy significantly, and as you can see here, genasm is doing that, you can, uh, you, which means that you are filtering a lot, so there will be less amount of uh, alignments that needs to be performed in the downstream. So the combined execution time for pre-alignment filtering and uh, the alignment step would be very uh, like uh, would be reduced significantly so that it would affect the overall execution for read mapping so it is critical to improve the accuracy by decreasing the false accept rate and briefly let's look at our results for the third use case here compared to the software baseline edilib uh, which is edilib genasm provides two to four orders of magnitude speed up while reducing co power consumption by two orders of magnitude and compared to the hardware baseline asap genasm provides 9 9.3 to 400 times speed up while consuming 67 times less power so again we find that genasm is significantly efficient in both metrics both speed up and power consumption compared to the uh, baselines for this use case so before I conclude, here's the list of additional details that we have in the paper, including algorithm details, more uh, detail about use cases, as I said, evaluation methodology details, and some other uh, additional results for all these use cases, along with a dedicated section where we explain our sources of improvements in terms of algorithm level, hardware level, and technology level. So to conclude, in this work, we focus on approximate string matching because it is one of the main bottlenecks of genome sequence analysis. And we propose GENASM, approximate string matching acceleration framework, to accelerate multiple steps of genome sequence analysis. And it is the first work that enhances and accelerates BITA for ASM with genomic sequences. And in GENASM, we co-design our modified and scalable uh, our modified scalable and memory efficient algorithms with low power and area efficient hardware accelerators. And we evaluate three different use cases and show that GENASM is significantly more efficient for all the three use cases in terms of both throughput and throughput per unit power than state of the art software and hardware baselines. So as I uh, and Juan already said, this will appear in Micro 2020 next week, next Wednesday. So we will, uh, I will present it next Wednesday and you can find our preprint. It's not preprint online. You can find our paper online. So thank you.